Hello friends, welcome to my shop. Today I want to show you how to make the tracks that I put on my uh, last project that I posted. The TD-29, TD-20. They're uh, very, very, very easy to make and uh, I think they look well and they work well and it's uh, as they say just easy as falling off a log which I've done a number of times or slipping on the ice which I did just a few minutes ago anyway all a person has to do is start with is a, a strip of wood uh, and anybody can cut that out quite quickly on a table saw and this piece here you just make it the size that you think you might want the tracks to be this will be the width of the pad and this will be the thickness that you need and this particular piece uh, that I that I put on that uh, dozer that I just showed you is approximately inch and a half wide a little less than a half inch thick so let's get started Okay, what I want to do is uh, cut uh, this particular profile on the end of that stick. Now there's a couple of ways you could do it. Probably the best way to do it would be to use some sort of a dado blade, but uh, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to changing blades, etc. So I'm just going to use the table saw. The setup that I have here is a little uh, different than what I've used in the past before I just ran it through the saw and uh, holding it down. Today I'm getting really fancy and using a, a roller to hold it down against the blade and uh, a feather board which I made up using a couple magnetic uh, bases which can be picked up quite cheaply for uh, dial indicators and uh, just adjusted the saw to the thickness I want and I'm going to make a series of cuts. So the first cut it's uh, positioned a little off center and then I'll run it through, turn it around and make another cut and then readjust. So let's get started here. So that gave just a, a wider cut than a single blade. Now what I'm going to do is just, usually you can just bang it over a little bit rather than loosening it. And uh, then I'll just adjust uh, my fancy feather board here. Again. And make another cut. As you can see, it's widening up quite quickly, and it helps to uh, be tall with long arms when you're doing this type of work. So I can reach over the saw and, and collect my work. So now all we have to do is repeat that process until we have it the correct width that we want. The width that I'm aiming for is um, for a three-quarter inch uh, piece of strapping. This happened to be a, a, a tie strap 
just getting a little bit shorter, but I'm certainly putting it to good use. Usually they're too long when you get them anyway. That looks like it's come along quite good. Uh, just another cut, I think, uh, on each side. Might have been a good idea at the beginning to uh, put a little pencil mark there so you'd know exactly how far, how close you were getting. So I'll just adjust this up a little bit with a little bit of a bang. And uh, just the redo on this. This holds quite, I put two of these in here, but it holds quite well just with one there. And we're ready to go. I found this quite easy to do it uh, with the roller and uh, this thing here, it holds it really nice and you get a quite a, a fairly flat uh, finish on the bottom. Way better than what I was doing before. Well that fits in there nicely. Almost looks like uh, I knew what I was doing. But uh, do that on, uh, and get it to fit onto one piece before you go onto your second one or if you have uh, extra ones. And uh, so if you goofed on the first one, you can correct it on the next one. Okay, now that I've uh, done the inside, got it all the size, now I just have to cut the uh, outer edge out here a little bit to get it into uh, this profile. So I just moved this out farther and move this in and uh, I'm ready to go. case now I'm going to move this the other tap it the other direction and uh, readjust my fence and I'm ready to go again. I would say that's almost complete, but I'm going to thin this up just a little bit more. So I'll make another cut and then we'll be ready for the next step. The next step is uh, just a simple little setup here to cut the pads to length off the end of the strips that you've already prepared there. <clears throat> I've used uh, just a piece of wood on here clamped with a clamp. So when you run your piece through it, it's not going to get caught in between there. They can still get uh, thrown back uh, every so often, so sometimes it's good to wear safety glasses for that operation. Other than that, it's um, quite simple to do there. We'll give it a shot. The, you set your saw at an angle, whichever you choose. I've chose 20 degrees. Why not 19 or 21? Well, sometimes we just pick those even numbers. So let's uh, give this a try here. was easy. Got a nice pile of them here. No time at all. Um, I had to pick them off each one with my uh, fingers there from the saw. The time before I did it they just all slid by but uh, anyway person's careful. They, the wind blows them back and you can just pick them up. Anyway the next step I have to do is cut this corner off here. So when it goes around the rollers that uh, it, uh, it's got clearance there. The first uh, set that I did, I just took it on the sander and nipped those off, which you could. But the last model here that I made, I used the table saw, so I'll show you how I did that. I just got a simple setup to do here. Here's some with uh, that uh, other corner cut off. 
and this is how I've uh, done it. I put a, a board on the side here, uh, mainly because uh, right opposite the saw, I've nicked the uh, fence up a little bit by having it too close to the saw, but I guess uh, none of you people would do a crazy thing like that. But anyway, a piece of wood on there corrects that problem so it won't stick. Then I'm taking a little thin piece, so I'm going to... I've lined all these up in along the fence there. You'll figure out which way to do it there. You want to cut, have the corner sticking out, so then you cut, uh, cut that little piece off there. So I'm going to use that to go up against it. And then I'm going to hold a whole slug of these like that with the uh, uh, push stick and just run it through the saw and I'll have a whole bunch done at once. Here's the last uh, cut that I need to make on these uh, grouser pads is to cut this little slot here for the actual grouser there. That little piece of wood will be uh, glued in there uh, after. So the first ones I did, I just uh, cut them all by hand by with my fingers running it over over the saw like that. It's fairly safe, but uh, this time I'm going to try lining them up like I did before there and uh, see if that that should work a little faster. So let's give it a try. It'll hold them in with a little piece of wood like that and then my uh, push stick right on top of that. Uh, worked a little better than trying to cut each one holding it with your fingers is quick and quite safe. I've uh, counted these out and I've got around 55 or so. To make a, a cat similar to this one here I, I chose uh, uh, 20, 20 pads. Uh, so anywhere from 20 to 25 you can make quite a nice model. Of course if it's bigger you're going to have to use more but it uh, doesn't take very long to make those. So I'm just going to clean these up and uh, cut a little piece of, uh, of wood to go in that little slot there for the grouser and then I'll, we'll assemble it. So that was uh, quite easy. Just about as easy as falling off a log or as I did a little while ago I slipped on the ice and fell on my back. That was fairly easy too but it doesn't feel that good. So anyway, I'll clean these up and we'll get back to you later. Okay, after you get them all cut, there's always a little bit of, uh, uh, from the saw, little chips that come out. Those need to be taken off. So uh, after all that hard work, I decided to come in here, sit in the massage chair and just relax and, and take a file and uh, fix those things up so they're nice and nice and clean. So that's an easy time to do. You can watch TV or, or whatever you want to do. But I decided to have a massage. And uh, just run over each one like that. That's quite simple. Knock those little burrs off while you're relaxing. And have uh, some herbal tea or whatever you want to do. Okay, I've cut some uh, strips of wood and uh, cut them to length to fit into the slots. Uh, these fit a little bit loose so what I'm doing here I got some uh, Gorilla Glue and uh, using one of these tops of cans I saved those and use them for mixing epoxy on and uh, that works good also if you notice this is a calendar on the table here this is a job you can do in the comforts of your home listening to music, whatever, is uh, gluing the little treads in there. I've uh, 
the tracks that I've made before, I just uh, made these, I was a little more accurate, and uh, you can use, that's the wrong way to do that, I do that every so often. If they're tight enough, I just take this little pock, um, crazy glue, go along like that, and that, that makes it actually a little simpler, but I didn't feel like cutting another set that would be a little tighter. And uh, some of your old calendars, if you're working on uh, a better surface, uh, save those and uh, protects the surface in case you spill glue or something like that. Because if you put glue on your on your uh, dining room table, if your wife catches you, you probably will make it, will be making tracks probably out the door. Anyway, get those. It doesn't take very long to pop those in. Okay, here comes the fun part. Now we can get to assemble it. And I've mixed up some five-minute epoxy here. I've taken this uh, strap that I scrounged up and uh, put it over top of a board with wax paper underneath just for uh, safety reasons so it doesn't stick to it if you get a little too much glue on it. I haven't done that before but I thought I'd do it this time just to cover all the bases. And uh, I just uh, took a board and planed it down to the thickness I needed so the so this would just the width here, which is three-quarter band. You can either use a scrounged-up band or buy one from a sewing store. They're quite inexpensive. And uh, laid it out so I could get the approximate length that I needed. Uh, stretched the band over, tacked it on each end. And we better get busy here. I put on uh, half of them on here with one squirt of the epoxy here so before that uh, sets up too much I better get started here just put a little dab on there uh, keeping it away from the edges particular and uh, then uh, just put it on the top you can use a little strip of cardboard this is from a juice box uh, put in there to you always leave a gap on here, otherwise your track will be stiff when it comes across the top. You like it to, you know, sag a little bit so it's uh, real, more realistic. It'll work a little better too. You don't need a lot of glue, but it'll soak into that uh, band. And, and once you get it started, better just saves time. If you use the... Uh, a spacer each time then you're going to be moving the one between there and uh, you kind of mess it up so it's your eye is a good guess for distance once you know basically what you're aiming for this is a little different type of method I'm putting this together uh, than I did with the first uh, uh, set of tracks that I did. If you've seen that on uh, Lumberjocks there, this will be faster, easier, and a lot more fun because you can get to do the whole thing all at once, basically. That glue is starting to set up a little bit there because I had mixed it up before I uh, set it up there, but even if you have to mix it up three times, one thing I've chose, uh, I think this should, I should have quit the last time, but oh, there's a little bit there. I've chose 24 pads for this particular project, and we'll see how it goes in. So that's all it is to, or the assembly. It goes very quickly and it's fun and fast to do. Okay, now that uh, we've taken the uh, tracks off the board and we're ready to join the two ends together. So what I've done is uh, I take a 
my joiner piece, put it together, leaving a little space in there, and then mark halfway across with, uh, with a marker of some sort. And then uh, we just take and cut that off. Okay, and the next thing I do is take a piece of tape. I'm using duct tape. I uh, misplaced my Gorilla Tape. I believe it's called Gorilla Tape. It's a lot stickier, but uh, I'm not sure where it's at. So I'm going to try with duct tape. I cut a little longer piece this time because it's not quite as sticky. And just put that in there clamp it in and then I've already done the same thing to the other end so we'll just bring that together a little clumsy doing it there and just tick it a little bit there oops that's not close enough there and then uh, <clears throat> take your little piece and fit it in there you gotta get it the right direction to make it go in and then check to see if uh, the, <coughs> the gap is there. If it's not, just take it apart. It sticks pretty good actually, you know. And uh, add a little bit more of a gap. I, Cut it a little, little short, I think. Okay, that looks pretty good with the gap in between each side. And uh, then we're ready to epoxy it. So I'll mix up some epoxy and then show you how I put it together and clamp it. Okay. I've got this set up on a couple little blocks here. Just thought that might be a little easier to uh, to get in there to do the job. So just a simple matter of taking uh, some of the epoxy. And uh, this time making sure it comes out to the edges, but not too much. And then pop your track in there. Make sure you get it the right way. Now if I had uh, thought ahead I would have saved a couple that didn't have uh, the grocers uh, added in there so I'm just adding a couple extra ones there. Then I took uh, this little uh, piece of block off of the the jig that I had and you're going to put that underneath there this is where it gets a little tricky but uh, not so sure whether that's that great an idea with those pieces in there I thought it might work put that underneath and then take some sort of clamp and clamp the clamp it in place that little piece will line it up there and clamp it down. Okay, it doesn't take too long for that five minute epoxy to set. I didn't do a very good job of, uh, of demonstrating how to put it together. I was a little clumsy there. Uh, the one, uh, the clamp that I was using, uh, it didn't hold properly. But anyway, and then but you kind of get the idea there. Anyway, once that's done, you just take the uh, tape off. This masking tape didn't work too bad. I kind of thought I wanted to use the that heavier Gorilla tape. And uh, there's the there and take this one off too I guess
And there we have two of them joined Twin together. Way. Now we'll just let these uh, dry a little while and uh, we'll perform a test on them. Okay, this is the test that I'm going to try to carry, carry out and see if it works. I've taken a section of track and uh, attached it up there on the with a cable on the carport here and then I'm going to put some weight on there well here goes nothing I haven't tested this out yet because I didn't want to break it in case it breaks but let's see if it holds my weight It's held, so that should be good enough. First ones I sewed and lapped, but uh, this is just glued butt to butt. And if it holds uh, 190 pounds, should be okay for a little model.